Hi, and welcome back to part two of the full tour through our logic stage programs. Uh, let's begin with a tour of the unit sheet. All right, so at the beginning of each unit, we'll have these unit overview sheets in the teacher's guide. So this sheet is going to look at the sequence of study. So you'll look at what this unit is going to cover, uh, the materials you're gonna need. So you can gather all your materials at the beginning of the unit. If you have the experiment kit, you'll know what you need for those weeks, or you can uh, pull them week by week. And then we'll have the vocabulary for the unit. So there is a glossary in the back of the student guide. So there is a glossary for your students to use, but you've got them all here. Uh, you've got all the vocabulary on the first sheet for you to see. And then you will have the memory work uh, listed by the unit. So again, your student will have that in the back of their guide. Here's a look at the student's uh, glossary in the back on page 257 in this guide. And it'll be different in the other ones. And then in the back of the student guide, they will also have the memory work listed by unit. In the beginning of the student guide for their unit work, they will have a vocabulary sheet. And this will have the vocabulary listed in order that they're assigned for the student to use. So they'll fill in this vocabulary sheet throughout the unit. And then they will have the student assignment sheet. And this student assignment sheet is identical to the student assignment sheet you have in the teacher's guide. So there's a student guide, there's a teacher's guide. It's the same sheet. Basically, we want you to have all the information that the student has uh, so that the student can have a little bit of independence. Remember, we're during the logic stage years, we're trying to work towards a little bit of independence. So you can say, you need to do your experiment today and they will have all the instructions for them in their guide. So let's look a little closer at that student assignment sheet. The first thing you'll see on there is the experiment. And this week they're making their own slides in the microscope. Okay, so the directions for that are here on the experiment sheet. The next thing you'll see on the student assignment sheet is the vocabulary for them to do that week. You'll have the memory work. Uh, sometimes this will be all written out. Other times you'll need to refer to the appendix for that. And then they will have the sketch information. This sketch information will tell them exactly what they need to label on there. And then you'll see directly opposite of the student assignment sheet will be a blank sketch in the student guide. So they'll be able to look at this information and label their sketch on as their book is open. And then the next thing you'll see on the student assignment sheet is the written assignments. This reading assignment, that is the required reading. So this is what they have to read. And then if you want to add in extra, you can assign these additional research readings. These are optional. This is required. In the appendix of the teacher's guide, we have a full listing of these dates. So if you want to print that out and have your students just cut out the strips with these dates and glue them in, if it's too much writing for your students, uh, that's what we did for the first few years with the logic stage programs. So that kind of helps cut down on the writing. As I said, in the student guide, the next thing the student will see is this blank schedule or this blank sketch. In the teacher's guide, the next thing you'll see is two optional schedules. So you'll have two days a week and five days a week. These two schedules will have the same information for the most part, uh, except for there'll be want more activities scheduled in the five days a week. Basically, you'll cover everything in two days or you'll cover everything in five days. So those are two options for you. Then next in the teacher's guide, you will have additional information for the week. So if there's any notes that I want to explain better, they will be on this additional information set, on this additional information sheet. Then the experiment information, again, like I said in the introduction, if you don't own a microscope, there will be a website here for you to look at those. And this introduction, this is the same introduction that you will find on the student's experiment sheet. So after their sketch, they will have the experiment sheet. And this introduction is reference for you in your guide as well. 
So the students will have the information they need to do the experiment. Each experiment sheet is customized for what they're doing. So for this particular one, it's telling them how to wait, make a wet mount slide. And then it's giving them boxes to draw what they've observed. So those experiment sheets, each one will be customized to what they need to record. Remember, observations are things they see and results are things they measure. In this particular experiment, they're not doing any measurements, so there's no space for results. In your guide, you will have what the student should see. You, so you'll have what their results should be. You'll have an explanation of what they should have seen during the experiment, the science behind it, and ideas to take it further. Then the next thing you'll have is discussion questions. So again, these questions are written in such a manner that you don't have to necessarily have read uh, the material as well. So you'll be able to ask the student what are the three basic parts of a plant cell? What do each do? And then you'll have the answers for you here. In their student guide, we'll have the discussion questions for them on the written assignment sheet. So they'll know when you assign to read the pages on plant cell, they're going to need to be able to answer these questions when they're done. Okay, so what you choose to have them write, uh, they could take notes as they read and do a list of facts that includes the answers to these questions. You could have them outline the pages. You could have them do a narrative summary. There's plenty of space for them to do that each week. So you'll have the answers to those questions. Then you'll have ideas to take it further if you want more. So you can make a jello cell. You can do some more microscope work uh, with them that week. And then you will have the answers to the sketches. You'll be able to check their sketch work. So they have that blank sketch and then you have the exact same sketch with the labels already done. So you'll be able to check that. If your student is struggling with labeling a sketch, please feel free to let them look at the sketch answers to complete it. Uh, some of the sketches can be a little bit challenging and we've done that on purpose because we want our students to think. Remember, in the logic stage, we want them to start making those connections. So if they're struggling with knowing how to label a specific sketch, it's perfectly fine for you to direct to guide them to give them direction for what the sketch should say or to show them what the answers are so that they'll be able to label those sketches and then after that you'll see the next student assignment sheet so we'll just keep going through those student assignment sheets in the same thing we'll have the student assignment sheet we'll have the unlabeled sketch we'll have the experiment sheet that's customized for that experiment and then we'll have the written assignment section and in your teacher's guide, you'll have that same student assignment sheet, you'll have the schedules, and then you'll have all that additional information for you. So at the end of the unit in the teacher's guide, we'll go through these five weeks. And then at the end of the unit, only in the teacher's guide, you will have a test. So these tests can be copied and given to your student, or you can print them out from that resource page. The tests are set up for the students to have some success. So of course they need to study a little bit in that they're gonna to need to know what the vocabulary is and the matching. But these questions aren't super difficult questions. If they've gone through the unit, they should be able to answer them. So you can use these as review sheets or you can use them as actual tests to see what they're absorbing. So you'll have vocabulary matching, you'll have true and false questions, you'll have short answer questions, and then after that test, you will have the answers. So these are the answers to vocabulary matching. If one of the questions has been false, we will give you the reason why it's false so you can help explain that to your students. And then the answers to the short answer. So that's what each unit looks like in both the teacher's guide and the student guide. In the student guide, they will just have those sheets and then it will go to the next unit. So they do not have the tests in the student guide. They are only in the teacher's guide and you can choose whether or not to assign those. So let's take a look at the appendix. Before we take a look at the appendix in both the teacher's guide and the student guide, I want to take a quick word about the year-end test. This test is basically a year-end review. You can do this as an open notes test or you can do it as an actual final exam. Especially when they get into like eighth grade, you probably want to use this more as a final exam to give them the familiarity of what a final exam is going to be like for when they get to the high school years. So it'll have the same components a little bit. You'll have your vocabulary matching, you'll have multiple choice, and short answer for this test. So again, it's designed to highlight the key points and key things that they needed to know. 
So you can choose to give this to your students or not. It's optional, but this will be week 36 of the program will be them studying uh, for this test and then taking this final exam. So let's look at the appendix. So this is the appendix in the teacher's guide. And this, again, just like in the grammar stage guides, we're going to have the stuff that wouldn't necessarily fit in those four teacher sheets. So the first thing we're gonna have is these date sheets. And like I referred to earlier, you can print these out and just have your students cut out each one and, pr and paste those onto their blank date sheets in the student guide. Or you can use these as reference for knowing where to put the dates when they copy those. So as you can see, we've got the ancients, the medieval, late Renaissance, and you can see there's definitely a lot more discoveries in the modern and late Renaissance age than in the ancients. So we'll explain the scientific method, just a quick article for you to be familiar with the steps of the scientific method. Another article to help you figure out how to set up your student's presentation board for the science fair project. And then remember way back in the introduction, we talked about the reading assignments for the younger students. So this sheet will help you coordinate some resources that are more appropriate for your younger students. And then the next thing you'll find in the teacher's guide is worksheets. So there are some want more activities that have additional worksheets for your students. And those will be front and back. You can print them duplex or double sided and give them to your students. They'll have a little bit of an explanation and then they'll have some things for your students to do. And then you'll have your blank templates. So scheduling templates for your students and a microscope worksheet for you in the back of the teacher's guide appendix. In the student's appendix, they will have the memory work listed by unit. So everything in one easy to use place. They'll have an activity log. If you do a field trip or a nature study or something that you want to record as part of your year, there'll be the option for them to do that. It's a couple pages for them to record any activities they did. And then they will have the glossary and everything, all the vocabulary that they're doing is listed in ABC order. There's your full tour of your Logic Stage Teacher's Guide and your Logic Stage Student Guide that you've just received. If you still have questions about these guides, please don't hesitate to email them to support at elementalscience.com. If you have questions as you go through the experiments each week, again, feel free to email us and we'll do what we can to help you through. And I trust you'll have a great year with science using the Logic Stage programs from Elemental Science. Thanks for listening.